Alright, I know this video was supposed to come out last week, but I ended up getting sick and losing my voice and making a video sounding like Kermit the Frog with a mouthful of bubblegum just didn't seem like a good idea at the time. So, this is going to be the second part of the 87.5 review. And we covered a lot of the functions on the button type stuff in the last video. I think just about all of them. So I think we'll just kind of go through the meter a little bit on some of the measurements and stuff and just to show kind of an ease of use you know and response times things like that and I figured the first thing we would start off with is temperature because I've got a glass of ice water on my bench right now and keeping that glass on my bench as a, for as short a time as possible seems like a good thing to do if you ask anybody I'm one of the clumsiest people that they know so we're looking for about 32 degrees. You can actually get a piece of ice there, 32.65. And you can see that it has a, a really fast response time on temperature. And some of that is going to be due to the meter and some of it's going to be due to, due to the thermocouple. You always want a good thermocouple whenever you're doing temperature on meters. The cheap ones they don't respond very well they just they have all kind of little issues but flukes thermocouple is really really good I mean you can see how quick it responds and I'm not gonna bother switching to Celsius because I don't like Celsius and nothing against it being a horrible thing or anything but I like Fahrenheit over Celsius because it does actually give you a little bit finer readings than uh, Celsius does because Celsius is a bigger degree of measurement I would also insert the argument that uh, there's two kinds of countries those that use the metric system and those who have been to the moon but NASA has been using the metric system for a long, long time. They actually went to the moon on the metric system. Um, I want to go ahead and show the input alert. Let's see. And the input alert is going to go off anytime you have a jack into the amps or the milliamps and you're not on one of those functions okay let's go ahead and take some measurements we're gonna start with DC volts and we're just gonna use my power supply to uh, feed it because we're just looking for response time we know the meter is accurate we're not going to try to test it against anything let's see if we can get it to range up one more time okay. you'll notice the uh, high voltage light comes on let's see where that comes on at right around the 30 volt mark Okay, let's try AC volts and we'll do that just by plugging into an outlet. The auto range speed on this meter is really quick for me. I really like it. Millivolts. We might be able to get millivolts out of this power supply. Okay. 
Okay, now an important thing on millivolts for this is that if you go into the high res mode, you go from a 6,000 count meter to a 20,000 count meter, but it only gives you an extra digit to the second decimal place, if that makes any sense. Um, basically what it's going to do is limit you from going to, let's see if I can get this to dial in real careful, but you'll be able to go to 600 millivolts in the 6,000 count range with a single decimal point of resolution. that ought to work. And when you go into the high res mode, you're going to be on overload until you get below 200 millivolts of resolution. 200 millivolts that you're measuring. Just something to take note of. Then of course you have continuity, fluke, is well known for having a really good continuity mode on their meters. We can do a real quick resistance check just to kind of check out the auto range speed on this thing. Tell you what, let's go ahead and swap to these jacks to make it a little bit easier. Not too bad. Capacitance. We'll try a 270 microfarad. Here we go. Really, really quick on that. We have another one right here we can try out. 100 mic. Really, really quick response on capacitance on this meter. Slightly limited range, but really good response. Let's do the red LED test. Well, you can kind of tell. Let's see. There we go. It does just barely light the red LED. And I can just tell you from experience that white, it will not light. That was a little wrong. Standard diode mode. It's going to be our open side. The closed side. About a half a volt drop, which is what we expect to see out of one of these diodes. Uh, milliamps and microamps. Um, this is another thing I don't really like about this meter is that it's not defaulting to DC so you always have to remember to push your button which is not a big deal if you're using this meter as an industrial meter because you are going to use AC a lot probably not so much to measure milliamps and microamps more of the amps range but I do wish that it was DC default uh, don't believe that I have anything ready right now to actually measure. I guess we could do across this resistor that we used earlier. Let's go ahead and turn it way down. 
We'll put about 5 volts through it. Let's see. 6 volts. Remember, we're not going to actually try to do too much accuracy type stuff on this because it's just not really worth it. Okay, let's go ahead and put a little current through it. Very jumpy for some reason. That's probably because of my power supply. Let's try that. Okay, so I was wondering what was going on with my readings, why I was acting so strange, and it's because I just got myself by having it in AC measuring mode. So let's go ahead and try this again. Not much more to see there. Let's go ahead and uh, set it to about 100 milliamps. And we'll put it into the milliamps and see. This is exactly what we expect. Okay, let's try microamps. Make sure we put it on DC this time. And um, I want it set really low. Why is it still reading overload? Negative. That is odd. I wonder if we didn't blow that fuse. Let's do a quick check on that. And we did indeed blow our fuse. Don't worry, there's already a video on that repair. And there's already a spare fuse right here. You should always keep spare fuses for your milliamp range. Okay, so other than that, there is the uh, VFD measuring mode. The only thing that I have that I can try that out with is actually in the shop mounted on the machine. So we're not going to take that out. Just trust me that it does work. It is very, very useful for doing that kind of stuff. Okay, so I guess while we have the meter open, I was changing this fuse and it's actually not blown, which is kind of strange. Uh, let me have to look into that. We could just kind of look at it a little bit more just to show the shielding and stuff. This wasn't plan to be a part of the video and I'm not going to take it apart any further because there's really no need to and I don't want to actually mess with it too much but I mean you can see the shielding on it and I believe that this is the newer model with um, the extra shielding and stuff to keep the um, I can't think of it right now, but basically your phone and stuff were, they were actually having issues where it was bricking the uh, 87s through the, uh, the high frequency noise and stuff of having a phone nearby. I'm pretty sure that this is the little bit newer version that has actually fixed that. I believe it's GSM if I'm not mistaken. 
But if you are buying an older 87.5, that is something to be mindful of, is that you have to be really careful of uh, having cell phones and just kind of high frequency noise around it like that. Uh, Dave Jones actually did a really good video on that, testing it out. And I believe that he has two. One is a follow-up to show that they did actually fix it on the different on the newer meters. But so oddly enough, the fuse did actually test good. I believe that we just overloaded it. So I guess just to conclude this video, you know, there's there's some things about this meter to not like. It it is I wouldn't put it as the god of all meters. It is a really good meter. Um, there may actually be better electronics meters out there, but for what I do. This is a really, really good meter because it can go anywhere. It can go from the bench to out in the field to service the machine to even just general troubleshooting on electrical type stuff. Is it worth the price for a hobbyist to get this? Honestly, I would probably say no to it. Um, there's a lot more options out there like getting older meters or even like these Brymans. Uh, this is the EEV blog version of the Bryman. Or the even getting the older, like the 83, like the, the original series meters, you know, you can get, you can pick those up for a hundred bucks, 120 bucks versus spending, you know, 350, 400. I've even seen, some vendors have these for 500 bucks and it's just it's really hard to justify spending that if you're just a hobbyist but it is a really really good meter but honestly i believe that there's better options out there for people who are on my level in electronics with just doing basic stuff so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it helped you out um sorry again that it was late but Thanks for watching. Oh, remember to like, subscribe, share, you know, all that stuff that makes me feel more popular. See y'all later.